Uh, I was saying earlier that this is a bigger um, showbiz roller coaster sort of uh, soap opera than anything they've ever produced at ITV in recent years. You know, the reality show to beat all reality shows. I mean, I didn't know when I came into the office this morning that Philip Schofield was going to issue a statement completely unprompted in which he was going to blame loads of people who got grudges against him. And I then didn't expect Eamon Holmes to come out and say, if you want to fight, mate, you're on. I mean, it's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it just seems it's moving every moment, you know, and especially we're having this thing where we're seeing Instagram stories becoming a huge part of statements. Yeah. And it means that, you know, within 24 hours, it can be it can be erased and there's sort of no log of it. Right. So, you know, as we've seen already, we've got Eamon Holmes tweeting about the delusional statement that Philip Schofield issued this morning uh, about the toxic culture and anyone holding grudges. Um, and it's it's just becoming a flanging match of, you know, tweets and Instagrams at the moment. It really is extraordinary. And um, I believe you watched it this morning. How did it how did it go? Was it Alison Hammond this morning? Yes, yeah, so it was uh, Alison Hammond uh, and Dermot. So um, Dermot opened the show with how was your weekend with the stress on your, <laughs> um, given the fact that they have probably had a very stressful weekend themselves. Um, and obviously a huge part of this morning is the news review. It's going through the paper. Uh, sitting down with their guests, they had Giles Brandeth on this morning, and they have to make you know a statement saying you know how much this morning is in the news, uh, but they're going to sort of work around it. And you know at the moment, how how can they? It's such a huge part of the news agenda. Well, it's extraordinary. I mean, knowing what we know about the media that we both work in, you know, you sit down, you meet, you talk about what you're going to do, what you're going to say. Uh, how the show is going to roll out, how your papers are going to cover things, and the idea that they can get can sort of work around the biggest story uh, on all of the front pages of the newspapers is ludicrous, isn't it? It's completely senseless. And also the big story, really, the biggest story in a way, aside from the sideshow of Phil and Eamon and all the rest of the personalities, is ITV itself, because ITV itself is now under scrutiny. People are asking questions about it. Uh, the Sun this morning have got a story saying that Arnold Clark isn't renewing its sponsorship. They've, they've, they've lost 50% of their share price, you know, Carolyn, um, the, the, the woman in charge of the company uh, as, as the CEO um, is literally sort of hanging by a thread because people are saying, well, how is it possible that she didn't know what was going on? You know, Martin Frizzell as well. Dr. Ranj Singh comes out and says it was a toxic atmosphere. I went to ITV, they didn't do anything, but they more or less let me go. I mean, they're under siege right now. Definitely. The microscope is definitely on uh, the top bosses at this morning. Um, and, you know, how, how can this show possibly go on with the amount of pressure and the amount of questions being asked daily? Um, you know, a lot, a lot needs to be, to be done, to be addressed. Um, to, you know, obviously a workplace culture, it comes from the top yeah. and if people are coming out and saying that's toxic, you know, it's going to be looking at the top bosses of, of the biggest show. This is ITV's jewel in its crown. It's the one that everybody tunes into every, every morning that goes into people's homes. Um, and Although, of course, the they lost that, out, though, didn't they? They lost yeah. 200,000 viewers last week. So, so people yeah. are tuning out and that's really serious for ITV. Definitely, you know, how this is a show which promotes this happy family ethos, you know, if people are seeing tweets about lies, deceit, you know, why, why would you want to tune into that? You know, this is supposed to be a program which makes you feel better about yourself and something that you want to be a part of, you want to be ringing in, you want to be even calling and sharing with your problems. And if the show's having more problems than yourself, you know, what does that say about it? Absolutely right. And I mean, you could say there might have been a certain kind of macabre um, voyeurism involved if it was still Holly and Phil, but since it's not them, and I don't even know when she's coming back, no Nobody seems to know when she's coming back, if she's coming back. You know, but watching two other people, um, there's a lot of people who think they should just do away with the show and start again. Do you think that's what will happen? Well, at the moment, you know, it seems obviously Holly and Phil are so woven, you know, excuse the pun, into that sofa, into the whole ethos and the whole part of the show. And, you know, how people will always be thinking, well, where's Holly, where's Phil? You know, it, it doesn't seem seems like some, something's missing and I think unless the show is maybe reformatted, you know, changed, um, it, it definitely needs to do something to, to move forward. Um, you know, it can't go on like this. It feels, it feels like a huge elephant is in the room um, and, you know, it's uncomfortable to watch and that's, that's not what this morning produces. No. 
Well, that's it. I mean, it's all turned out to be a nest of vipers. And, you know, as you say, yeah. and a lot of people calling my show today saying, you know, they're sick to death of it and the hypocrisy uh, and all of the kind of the, the, the secrets and all of those things. And I mean, as I say, the Eamon Holmes tweet, which has really kind of set the cat amongst the pigeons, I'm reluctant to give the liar any more publicity. I mean, he's out there calling Philip Schofield a liar in public on a platform where I think he's got about half a million um, followers. Uh, he says, if you're looking for a fight, you've picked on the wrong person. I mean, this is unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in, in my career. It's it's truly extraordinary, and even the pace in which it's happening. You know, it was only a, you know a week ago that we had Holly and Phil on the sofa together, and then we had obviously the statement from Alison and Dermot um, wishing him the very best. And now we've got Holly saying how you know he asked him about the relationship with his faith, in which he denied it. So you know, it just seems that it, it's the whole different. There's so many layers to this story, yeah. and it's, it's going to keep developing. And I think you know, financially, may be the key to it as well, because if they do keep losing listeners and they do keep losing advertisers, and the share price opens tomorrow and dive bombs. I think, uh, you know, Carolyn McCall's in a pretty bad place. 100%. You know, this is a show which depends on sponsorship. It depends on viewers. Viewers are at the heart of this programme. It's a magazine show. It depends on competitions, people ringing in. And mm. if, you, if you don't have that, you know, you, you haven't got what makes this morning. Um, it's a hugely, you know, significant part of that is, is viewers. You know, if you haven't got those people calling and ringing and wanting to be part of part of the show and coming on as guests, then, then really what have you got? Yeah, well, exactly right. And also the other thing that I find fascinating is the people who are saying absolutely nothing. I mean, like Holly Willoughby issued that one statement last week. I mean, it's hard to believe that all of these things have happened in the same few days. You know, that when, when on Friday when uh, Philip Schofield came out and admitted he'd lied to everybody, he'd lied to his wife, he'd lied to Holly, he'd lied to ITV, he'd lied to his lawyers, he'd lied to the Daily Mail, he'd lied to his agents. I mean, seriously? You know, I mean, most people would have gone and hidden under a rock for the rest of their lives, but he's back out there today. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, you know, I, I can imagine, you know, a lot of journalists, myself included, you've all got notifications on for, you know, most of this morning, this morning cast, and you think, gosh, what now? And you get another push notification on your phone, and there's another statement. Um, and, you know, it's also, you know, the people that aren't speaking out, some people are you know, trying to lie low and maybe... maybe well, I was just looking at Susanna, Susanna Reid's... I don't really follow Instagram as much, probably, as I should, as you do, but Susanna mm -hmm. Reid hasn't tweeted for five days. Adil Ray uh, has only tweeted once since the 9th of May, and that was to congratulate Aston Villa on going into Europe. This is a guy who's got a view on everything. He doesn't have a view on Philip Schofield in this morning, and ITV, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like obviously the statements that you do put out is going to be under scrutiny, and if you're not putting out a statement, people are questioning why. And yeah. you know, what do you know? So you know, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. As yeah, well. I mean, rats and sinking ships spring to mind, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And also the pressure is on, uh, not only from inside of ITV, but from outside as well, because a lot of people are asking the question, you know, why is it that the identity of the young man involved in this story is being kept um, out of the news? Lots of people are seeing his picture on the internet. Uh, his picture is being pixelated by most media organisations at the moment, but there's loads of pictures of him with Philip Schofield out in restaurants, mm -hmm. inside studios, inside of... There's even... He's got a show reel. Uh, he's done an interview. I mean, there's all kinds of material there which is just going to keep coming out. Definitely. And, and this is what makes, you know, the world of media so complex in, in this sort of age. You know, you have social media where, where people can type in names, uh, you know, pictures can pop up. Mm. Um, but, you know, at the centre of this, despite all of the... The, the gossip and you know the, the tweets around it is you know a young man who you know we all hope is having the help and support that he needs um because you know this was someone that really was pursuing a career in tv um which has you know unfortunately ended in in this situation yeah. Unbelievable. Well, listen, you're going to have a busy week, I suspect, Emily, so I shall let you get on with it. Thank you very much indeed. Emily Webber, Deputy Showbiz Editor of The Sun on Sunday.